Hello and welcome to Patterns Schmatterns. It's wonderful to see so many people here today that are here to learn about serious process. It's certainly my passion over the last several years as I've been able to learn such a ridiculously huge living off of consulting about process. I'm very passionate today and in general about patterns because I feel that there's even more consulting money to be earned there, which is why I've recently changed my title. I am, of course, a process methodology patternologist. <laughs> now, of course, several questions about patterns may occur to you if you've just wandered into this room by mistake. So maybe we should cover some of those. For instance, what are software development patterns? How are they used? How can I use patterns? How do you use patterns? What are some important patterns? What are my consulting rates like? <laughs> when is lunch? Will he stop asking questions soon? And of course, when is lunch again? So I don't have the time or the interest or the budget to answer most of these questions. I would have to charge you far too much money for that. But we'll cover some of these today. <laughs> Starting with what are patterns? So I've tried to describe it in just a few words on the next slide. I'll give you a second here. If we can move on. I think we can actually break it down to its fundamentals, though. It's all about the consulting rates, let's be honest. So moving on to the next question, what are some important patterns? Well, first of all, we need to ask what makes a pattern important. Uh, it's a software development pattern or methodology that should be in common usage or at least should be easily to be used in common usage when it's used. It should be easy for developers to actually incorporate this practice into their everyday life. And most importantly, it needs to have a neat name. There are, of course, traditional patterns and there's some more modern patterns. This is actually why I wanted to give this talk today. I'm very happy that Stefan asked me to come here to tell you about some of the trending and future patterns going on. Now, the traditional patterns, of course, were popularized by the GOF in 1994 in their seminal work on the topic. This is, of course, the Gang of Four when they wrote the book and then went on to fantastic consulting careers based on those patterns. <laughs> the trending patterns were, of course, uh, first discussed uh, just earlier this year by the DM, which is, of course, the drunken mob. So we'll try to cover some of these patterns today to give you a better idea of what's out there and maybe what you can incorporate into your company's usage by hiring consultants like me. First, of course, is the delegate pattern. This is about using helping helper classes to delegate responsibility uh, down to these other classes, often referred to as the inversion re of responsibility. On the other side is the delicate pattern. This is, of course, from the fragile methodology process. There are no helpers. There's no owners. Um, there's actually no responsibility whatsoever. <laughs> it results in so much chaos and confusion that the resulting product is apt to break easily and non-deterministically. Moving on, we have the factory pattern, which is, of course, an interface for creating objects without exposing the implementation details. We defer the instantiation of these objects to subclasses or to private implementations. In software development, one of the most common patterns has actually been used um, since the founding of our industry is, of course, the refactory pattern. <laughs> In this pattern, we uh, practice such things as renaming, changing class hierarchies, changing packages, and just completely rewriting code from scratch for the sheer hell of it. On the refactory pattern, it's basically an excuse for creating software. Um, and we also use the pattern of deferral here, and we usually use the product shipment to the next release. And then when the next release comes up, we again defer. Very effective pattern used over and over again by um, pretty much everybody in the room. <laughs> the iterator pattern is about sequential access without exposing the underlying implementation details. And then we have the obliterator pattern, which is essentially the same thing. It's responsible for visiting these objects in sequence. But in addition, it adds the important capability of the auto-delete pattern. As it visits each of these elements, it will then remove that object, eventually deleting the list and the calling function, the application that called it, sometimes the operating system, the computer on which it was run, and possibly the dimension in which we all exist. The important caveat about this pattern is that you should really deploy it without testing it first. <laughs> the facade pattern is very popular. It unifies 
a set of interfaces into a single interface that can be called. Uh, there's another trending pattern called the veneer pattern. Um, it's actually exactly the same thing. The advantage of the veneer pattern is that it's not so difficult to type for English speakers. <laughs> I don't even know where that symbol is under the C. It's not on my keyboard. And then both of these, of course, are simply thin wrappers over spaghetti code. The functional design pattern is about every module having a single purpose. It's not exposed to the implementation details of the Arbol system. It just has one job to do. Minimizing knowledge of everything else makes things more standalone, more reusable, more object-oriented friendly, and more apt to be used and talked about by consultants. The dysfunctional pattern is one in which every component knows about every other component. Uh, some of the variants of this pattern are known as the gossip and the nosy parker. There's lazy initialization, which is about avoiding expensive work until it's absolutely necessary. Similar to that is lethargic initialization, <laughs> which is also about avoiding work. <laughs> the advantage to lethargic initialization is it takes no system resources whatsoever because nothing ever happens. <laughs> the singleton pattern is also known as the Highlander pattern. There can be only one. This is global access to a single instance in the entire system. Similar to that is the single pattern. The difference here is that singles don't actually want to be single. They would really like to be with someone else. <laughs> They're often seen in pairs, but only briefly. Variants of this pattern are known as the depressed pattern, sometimes the suicidal pattern. We have the visitor pattern. This is an operation that's performed on each of a set of elements. Compared to that is the tourist pattern, which also visits all of these elements and makes a loud and complete mess of everything they visit <laughs> before moving quickly on to a completely different element next door. There's the memento pattern. This is about capturing, capturing in an externalizing state. Compared to that, we have the pimento pattern. This comes from the olive with the pimento inside in which we put internal state into completely unrelated objects. There's the decorator pattern, of course, which adds responsibilities uh, to the same interface. We don't change the interface, we just add more functionality to it. Compared to that is the designer pattern. Uh, this adds new colors and styles and physically impossible requirements. This is actually the fundamental pattern used in interaction between engineering and UX departments everywhere. We have the object pool. It's about recycling objects that are expensive to destroy. You just create a pool of these objects. When they go away, you put them in the pool, you retrieve them when you need a new one. All very handy. Compared to that, we have the hot tub pattern, which is about reusing objects that were used by complete strangers <laughs> and left in a dirty and unhygienic state. And finally, we have the strategy pattern that selects the best algorithm at the time, implementation detail, which one it selects. Compared to that, we have the cunning plan, which also selects an algorithm in secret to undermine the entire system. There's one final question that you probably want to ask after covering all these patterns, and that would, of course, be, when is lunch again? And that would be now. And that concludes my talk. Uh, I think we have some time for questions uh, today. <laughs> Uh, we've run just about 11 minutes shy of the 15-minute talk, um, so I'm happy to entertain some questions. Uh, I may, of course, need to charge you for the answers. <laughs> Anybody has questions? I'm really feeling very awkward. <laughs> oh, there's a question in front. Please wait, sir. What do I think about a more aggressive form of the tourist function? New York tourist. The New York, I was thinking American tourist, but you actually want to focus it specifically on New York. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, that's actually a pattern in common usage today. It has a really annoying accent, a very aggressive attitude, and it's frankly just mean. <laughs> uh, there was a question in the back. No, there was just someone talking aloud. When is my book coming out? Uh, well, we have, 
We have some books out already uh, from my company. I have a couple of the um, unrelated books here. Uh, we have some pro programming books. I would like to work on a process book. It depends on how much I can charge for it. <laughs> I like questions like that. We can have more questions like that if you'd like. What's for lunch? What's for lunch? Um, sandwich. I like how the sandwiches are distributed. You start with a vegetarian, everyone of course passes that by because we're interested in meat. You see the ham and you think, well, I've had ham before, I want something more interesting. And so you keep on moving down the line and when you get to the end you see the crab and you think, well, I'm not touching that. But now it's crowded behind you, you can't get back. <laughs> this is how they get rid of the crab sandwiches is they put them at the end. <laughs> it's called the seafood pattern. You've, you finally see the food that you're stuck with. <laughs> the agile angle. Well, we saw the fragile angle, of course, with the, uh, with the one of those patterns I talked about. I can't remember. Um, the agile, so agile is related to, of course, scum. And the, the idea, as I understand it, is to move faster in teams by spending part of your development time every day going to another meeting. Um, this works really well for consultants because then they actually look productive in comparison. Um, so I think that's of most benefit um, to the people using Agile is the uh, the wealth of opportunity it provides for, for consultants in the Agile space. It's also a very important thing to have on your LinkedIn profile, and I encourage everyone here to go to LinkedIn and recommend everyone you know as being proficient in the Agile skill. I can't think of a more useful thing to know about someone than that they know Agile. What's that? Do we write code between meetings? Not if we're doing our job properly. <laughs> no, if we have a full day, it should be a day full of meetings and transit between meetings. Um, we should, if we have a smartphone on us, we can process email between meetings on the way from meeting to meeting. And then we reach the end of the day and we go home and we think about all the meetings that we've had. And then the next day we wake up and we look at our calendar and we plan for the meetings that are coming up. And if we don't have enough, if our calendar actually looks empty, then we create some meetings. <laughs> That's how code gets written, <laughs> right? I mean, I think we learned this last year that the more, uh, there have been huge studies on this. This is very important. Everyone, this is the takeaway. The more code that's written, the more bugs that are written. <laughs> so the more meetings you go to, the less code that's written, the less bugs you create, the better your performance review, the better your salary. <laughs> right. I mean, this is all obvious stuff, right? <laughs> yes? You have very trendy in the idea of what you also an NSA pattern. An NSA pattern. I don't know what you mean by that, sir. <laughs> and if anyone's listening right now, I didn't answer the question. <laughs> yes, sir. What happens if you mistake the hot tub pattern for the bidet pattern? Now, as I understand, the hot tub pattern is useful for soaking your code in, whereas the bidet pattern is simply a low-lying sink in which you can wash your code in <laughs> or brush your teeth with it. Is that, I'm a tourist. Did I understand that correctly? I've been practicing the tourist pattern. I made a mess of my bidet. What an awkward laugh. Anyone else? Everyone else is just hungry. They're thinking, when is he going to shut up? What? Uh, can we use the singleton pattern, please?
Where is my tie indeed? I was hoping that no one would notice that, and I was more particularly hoping that no one would bring it up. I, um, I, frankly, I can't charge the fees that I normally do when I'm not wearing a tie, so I feel a little embarrassed and naked here today. I thought about simply not wearing anything, but then Stefan insisted. <laughs> so we do what we can. I simply forgot. I, I apologize on behalf of my consulting organization. There was another question being spoken in parallel using the awkward multi-threading pattern. Certification, what about certification? I can totally charge you for a certificate for having come to this class. Absolutely. 200 euros, I will give you a piece of paper saying that you attended the Pattern Schmatterns talk. <laughs> I'll write it right now. Also, um, I wanted to, for my organization, just get a, a count. It seemed like a few people were able to make it to the talk today. If I could find out how many people are here. If you could raise your hand. <laughs> One, two, three. Hang on. Four. Yes. The actor pattern. I practice it myself. It's fantastic. The important thing is to print, pretend that you know what you're doing. <laughs> yes. Is there a pattern for inventing more patterns? That shows the time you were in court and that you were there. Is there a pattern for inventing patterns and thus sounding more important? Uh, absolutely. I use it myself every single day. The more patterns that you can use, the more buzzwords, the more catchy names that you can use, the more important you are to your clients. Yep, absolutely. How do you think I came up with this talk? <laughs> so I think that winds up the talk for this year. Thank you for coming. I hope you learned as much as I did.